Let me ask you a sincere question, bro. Of course you believe in the Most High, right? All praise to the Most High. So it's not by accident that you stumbled upon us tonight. So my question to you is, what's holding you back? What's holding you back? Because when we talked over here, you've heard this before. We, you've heard it before. So my question to you is, what's holding you back? Psalms 119.16. You know the one. Psalms 119.16. Think about that. What's holding you back, bro? Is it the lust? Is it drugs? Is it family members? What's holding you back, bro? Because you know this is right. You know this is the right way, don't you? So my question is, what is holding you back, bro? Watch what the scripture says. I want you to listen to this, all right? Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 60. I made haste and delay not to keep thy commandments. The Bible says, King David said, hey, he made haste and delayed not to keep God's commandments. That means what? When the opportunity of repentance was granted unto him, he didn't play around with it. That's right. You understand that, right? These are basic scriptures, but bro, right. to give you warning and to give you another opportunity to get yourself together. That's right. Give me that in uh, Surah 5, make no tarry. You know it's right. You know this thing is right. Read what you got. So what? Chapter 5 and verse 7. Make no tarrying. Do what? Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. You hear that? The Bible says, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. Why is that? Why, when an opportunity of repentance is granted unto you, why is the Bible telling you not to tarry? Not to take your time. Why is it telling you that? We don't have a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time. That's right. Give me that in Hebrews 1. We do not have a lot of time. Hebrews 1 and verse. Hebrews 1. And let's see, verse 2. I want you to listen to this. Actually, just start at verse 1. All right? Listen close. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. By what? By the prophets. Read it again. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners. It says in sundry times and in diverse manners. All right? Certain times and different ways. Come on. Spake in time past unto the Father. So God spake to our forefathers. Read. By the prophet. By what? By the prophet. Brother, if you didn't know, we are the prophets of the Most High God. That's right. Come on. Have in these last days. In these what? In these last days. If these are the last days, what does that mean? We're getting closer to the end. So meaning what? Your time's running out. Your time's running out. So I'm going to ask you again. What's holding you back? Brother, isn't it about time that you start putting in bricks for your nation? Isn't it about time that you come from being on that side to being over here with us? Right. Don't you love your people? Give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Bring it up. If you love your people, there's no way that you should be okay with our situation. Right. If you sincerely love your people, there's no way seeing us in the hoods, seeing us strung out on drugs, Seeing our sisters being prostituted, our children having sex at young ages, you should be sick to your stomach. Right.
what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Read it again. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. You understand that? What does that mean? It's, uh, you can see things happen around you and things happen to you. Exactly, you should be mad. Understanding what? Understanding that we should be where? We should be above. We should be above. That's right. We should be above. My question to you is, why are we not? Because of the curses. Because of the curses. Because of the curses. For not keeping the commandments of God. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 33. 28 and 33. Let me look at that. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 33. Come on. The fruit of thy lands and all thy labors. So the Bible says the fruit of our lands, all of our labors. Weren't we out in the cotton fields, sugar cane fields? Read it again. The fruit of thy lands and all thy labors. So all of our labors, come on. Shall a nation which thou knowest not. Read that again from the top. The fruit of thy lands and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not. Come on. Eat up and thou shalt be only oppressed. That should be what? Only oppressed. Come on. And yeah. crushed always. How long? Always. How long? Always. Yes. Now, why are we oppressed? You said it earlier, because we stopped doing what? We stopped keeping God's commandments. Give me Deuteronomy 30. So how are we going to get out of this condition or situation? Repentance. If you repent, for example, for example, if, you, if you're a whoremonger, right? How do you repent from being a whoremonger? Just ask God for forgiveness. Okay, ask God for forgiveness. Then what? Stop. 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 Yeah. You have right. to stop. Right. That's something our people don't know how to do. Yeah. Why people don't know how to do that? Because in the Christian church, they say what? God loves everybody. They say that, right? Does God love everybody? Does God love you in your sin? Yeah. You say no. yes? No. You say no. What you say? I say you don't love everybody. Okay, you say you don't love everybody. Does God love you when you're in sin? He, so you're saying he, um, what did he say? You say he, uh, God loves the person but hates the sin. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Give me uh, Psalms 5 real quick. Bring it out. Psalms 5 and 5 real quick. Yeah. And then Sirach uh, 12. You know what I want. Give me that. I want y'all to listen very, very close. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 5 and verse 5. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Come on. Thou hatest. Thou what? Thou hatest. Thou what? Thou hatest. Come on. All workers of iniquity. He hates what? All workers of iniquity. God wow. says he hates all workers of iniquity. So that means what? Y'all yeah, want me to pass out some flyers and stuff? Yeah. Give this brother some flyers. Yeah. Give this brother some flyers. Come up here, give him some flyers. He said he want to pass them out. He want to put a brick in for his nation. I'm trying to pass them out. Give him some more. Okay. Give him some more flyers. Okay. Pass that out. Spread the word. Nah, this is to rebuild your nation. That's what this is for. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 6. For the most high hateth sinners. Read it again. For the most high hateth sinners. And bro, this is what you're going to understand. You ain't ever going to hear this anywhere else. The prophets speak the truth. The Christian church has been leading our people astray. Right. They never, they never bring out this scripture to show that what? Read it again. For the most high hateth sinners. God hates sinners. That's right. What's the punishment for sinner? Death. Exactly. The wages of sin is death. So let me go back to my first question. What's holding you back? Get out. Get but out. this ain't me. This ain't him. This is at the most high. Right. This is your day. That's right. Don't play with it. If you know the wages of sin is death, and the Most High God has granted you an opportunity to repent, give me that in uh, Second Ezra nine. 
Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 9. I want you to pay close attention, brother. Today is your day. You got to do what? You have to get over your own self. Right. You're in your own way. 2nd Ezra chapter 9. And start at verse... I want... Start at verse... Yeah, 7. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 9 verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So bro. Understanding that what? We must keep God's commandments to what? Be saved. Right. To get to the kingdom of heaven. To receive eternal life. Right? right? That's what the Bible just said. I want you to read on. Verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case. Which now have abused my ways. Which now have done what? Have abused my ways. Now. He's talking about something else now. He said those which have abused his ways. What are God's ways? Now, I want you to read it again. Read that verse again, verse 9. Come on. Then shall they be in pitiful case. It says, in a pitiful case. Is that good or bad? bad. That's bad, right? right? Why would they be in a pitiful case? Come on. Which now have abused my ways. Have done what? Abused my ways. What are God's ways? Give him that of Hosea 14. We, that's all we here. We're here to give you the understanding. So you can put the puzzle pieces together. So you can realize what you're doing. Christ came and died for the nation of Israel, right? Yes. When he came and died, he gave us what? He gave us grace. Right. He gave us grace. Come on. The book of Hosea, chapter 14, verse 9. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. So the Bible asks the question, who is wise and shall understand these things that are written in the Bible? Come on. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. For the what? For the ways of the Lord are right. It says, the ways of God are right. You understand that, right? Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 17. It says, the ways of God are right. We must find out what's right according to the Bible, right? Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 17. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God. You shall do what? Diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God. Diligent, diligent is the same thing as prudent. But we just read in Hosea, right? Come on. And his testimonies and his statutes, which he had commanded thee. Read. And thou shalt do that which is right thou shalt do what that which is right you see that the ways of god are right and his commandments are what's right titus 2 and 11. but brother you now understand that right but you can't abuse it you can't play with it you can't say hey give me a few days i'm gonna get myself right no that's you what tarrying to turn to the lord that's you not making haste to turn to the lord right. you understand that right Come on. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. It says the grace of God which bringeth salvation. We just read about that in 2nd Ezra 9. The only way you're going to be saved is by what? How are you going to be saved? You have to do what? Repent. You have to do repent and do what? You have to... You have to do what? You have to keep what? Keep commandments. You have yes. to keep the commandments. Read it again. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. The grace of God with bringeth salvation. These are the ways of God. Grace doesn't mean what? That I can play around? That I can take my time? No, no. That's not what it's talking about. Hold that. Give me that in Romans 6. 6 and 1. Watch this. Yes, read that. The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Read it again. 
What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The Bible asks the question, should you continue to do what? Play with God so you can have grace? That's what the question is. That's what the question is. Should you? You shouldn't. 3 verse 14. Watch this. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Come on. For sin shall not have dominion over you. You hear what the Bible says? Sin should not have dominion over you. Yeah. Read on. Amen. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. So you're not under the law of sacrifice anymore. Do you remember in the old covenant, if we sinned, we had to do what? We had to kill rams, bullocks, and sacrifice. Read it again. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. You're under grace, which means what? Now, you willingly keep God's commandments. Right. No longer do you have a mind of fornication and you go commit the act, then offer up sacrifices. No, that would never make you perfect, would it? Now, God is commanding us to be perfect. Right. Meaning what? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Right. You do it willingly because you love the Most High God. Right. And your sacrifice is who? Jesus the Christ. Right. That's right. And the longer that you continue to play around by not repenting, you are showing disrespect to your Lord and Savior. Right. Read verse 15. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law? So the Bible says, okay, now can we sin because we're not under the law of sacrifice? Come on. But under grace, God forbid. No, no, no brother. No, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Go back to Titus 2. Well, so we got to find out what this time period is going to teach us. You said it yourself, we're in the last days, right? right? So we have to understand why God hasn't killed us yet. You understand that? Why has God not killed us yet? Right. Because we're all worthy of death. That's right. Why has God not killed us yet? Read what you got. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 Come on. For the grace of God That bringeth salvation Have appeared to all men Teaching us Doing what? Teaching us Doing what? Teaching us Grace This time period Before Christ comes back Teaches us Come on That denying ungodliness That what? Denying ungodliness Come on And worldly lust We should live soberly Righteously. What? Righteously. The keeping of God's commandments. Come on. And godly in this present world. That is why you're living right now. Because a dispensation of grace or repentance have been presented unto you this day. Second Ezra 99. Bring it out. So brother, as you hear the scripture, you got to realize what is holding you back. Because there should be no reason at this point why you should continue in sin. Right. That makes no sense, does it? If you're dead to sin, why would you continue anymore therein? Come on. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 9. Read. Then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my way. Those who have taken advantage of the grace through Jesus Christ. Read. And they that have cast them away despitefully Come on. shall dwell in torment. Shall do what? Dwell in torment. Is that what you want? Now think about it. You say no quick, right? Hold that. Give me uh, 1 Samuel 2 and 3. Right up. You say that quick. No, no, oh, heck no, I don't want torments. But guess what? Your actions speak otherwise. Right. Read what you got. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Come on. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Don't be so quick to just say, no, heck no. I don't want torment. I ain't going to get no torment. Listen to what the Bible's saying. Come on. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Read. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. What is weighed? Actions are weighed. You see that, right? It says by him, actions are weighed. 
Revelation 22 and 12. It says, by him, actions are weighed. You see that, right? Come on. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. The reward is what? The reward is the kingdom of heaven or death and damnation. You have to choose which reward you're going to receive. Read it again. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. You see that? Your actions, your actions. Keeping the commandments is not lip service, it's actions. Right. You have to put on fringes. You have to congregate on the Sabbath day. Right. You understand that? Go back to 2nd Ezra 9. Read what you, uh, verse 10, I believe, 2nd Ezra 9 and 10. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 10. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Come on. And they that have loathed my law. Read that again. And they that have loathed my law. It says, and they that have loathed his law, meaning what? Those who hate it or despise God's laws. Meaning what, brother? When you hear the good news, when you hear that this is the right way to go, and you say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go on about my business. And you're going to keep doing the same thing. Yeah, I know I'm Israelite, but you ain't keeping God's commandments. That's showing what? That you hate God's laws. Because you yourself, you're, they're not good enough for you to keep. You understand that, right? Read it again. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law, while they have yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance. Read it again. When as yet place of repentance. Right, this is your place of repentance right here. This is your place. You're standing in, in front of the prophets in the, in the presence of the Most High God. Right. This is your place of repentance. It's granted to you right now. Right. Come on. When as yet place of repentance was open unto them. It's open unto you, bro. What's your name? Right? I'm mad at that. Right. Repentance is open unto you right now. You have examples. Give me that in Judith 8. You have living examples in the midst of you right now in touching distance. Yeah, in our state right now, we might look like carnal men. But the Most High God is refining us to be fine gold. That's right. We are not normal men. A normal man will say to hell with my people. Right. I, I don't mind staying in this condition. I'll continue to sin and not get over myself. But we not normal men. We the men who said to hell with that. God commanded us to be perfect, so we gonna try every day. That's right. And we gonna come out to the street corners and teach our people one by one. That's right. Because right. God commanded us to do that. That's right. Read what you got. Judas chapter 8 verse 24. Come on. Now therefore, O oh brethren. Oh what? O oh brethren. Come on. Let us show an example. Let us do what? Show an example to our brethren. To our brethren. Brother, what about you? Right. Psalms 94 and 16. What about you? We heard the call and we answered. That's right. What about you? Read what you got. Psalms chapter 94 verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? God says, who is going to rise up? Who's going to stand up manfully and take their rightful position back on this earth? Read it again. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? There's many evildoers out there. We got the number one oppressor, the so-called white man. Right. We have the evil within our own communities. Give me that at 1 Maccabees 11 and 21. Bring it out. Don't think it's just the white man. We got evil amongst ourselves. Understand this, my brother. If you don't repent and keep God's commandments, you're part of the problem too. Right. If you don't want to rise up and be an example to your brethren, you hate your people. Right. Read what you got. 
First Maccabees chapter 11, verse 21. Come on. Then certain ungodly persons. Certain what? Ungodly persons. Come on. Who hated their own people. Who did what? Hated their own people. Psalms 94, 16. Yeah. You have to understand, brother. You have to understand what your actions are displaying. Right. You understand that? Yeah. Read it again. Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Against the evildoers. You're supposed to rise up against the ungodly. Against the evil. Don't be doing the same thing. Right. You have to make a difference between the clean and the unclean. The righteous and the unrighteous, brother. you got to choose a side. Give me that in Revelation 3 and 15. Right. You must choose a side. Read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. That's you. Right now, your actions, right now, your works, you're a tweener. You got your foot in the world, and then the other foot is like, yeah, I know, I'm Israel. I understand that now. That's the right thing. But guess what? That ain't good enough. Read it again. I know thy works, that thou Thou art neither cold nor hot. Come on. I would thou were cold or hot. God is saying, I'd rather you were either cold or hot. Read. So then, because thou art lukewarm. But because you're in between, you're both of them. Read. And neither cold nor hot. Come on. I will spill thee out of my mouth. God will spill you out of his mouth. Meaning what? Matthew 7 and 21. This is what he means by that. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Come on. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Many will say, Lord, I believed on you. I told people about the good news. Come on. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Read. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Read that again. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. That means he will spew you out of his mouth. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.